So to do that, um, right click, built-in module, panel, and we'll use a knob, and you can choose between a fader and a knob, I guess, whichever one you would like better. But I pick a knob. And so, look up what look what happened up here. So I'm gonna undo that. Um, see, a knob showed up. And uh, when I get rid of it, it disappears. Um, so, I automatically, when you add something from the panel, it shows up automatically in the in the uh, um, panel view, and this is the structure view. So, so we're gonna add a, uh, a knob, and it's gonna show up. It's gonna say knob, and you can change it, uh, the name of the knob in the properties, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to call it, for simplicity's sake, attack. See, it changes the attack knob and the attack um, module in the structure view. So now, since this is the attack, and A stands for attack, we're going to link these two. Uh, just click and drag over. You know what to do. And and now we need four nor we need four more knobs. So we need attack decay. Sustain. And release. And we'll link them all up. And notice how your panel looks kind of like a mess. So we'll fix that. Over here, uh, you have a picture of a wrench, and I think that's what it is in the older versions of Reactor. It's just in the top window somewhere. Uh, there's a picture of a wrench. Click that, and that switches to toolbox mode or something. I I'm not exactly sure what it's called. Um, but anyway, you click this so that you modify stuff on the panel. And you can drag the buttons around to make it look how you want. So we're going to try and make this as tidy as we can. Um, so yeah, you have attack, decay, sustain, release. And now exit the panel view. And now we need to change the values of these knobs. So to do that, you'll notice up here that I I clicked on the check mark. Um, you click on a knob first and then you make sure this check mark is up here. You have your regular browser right, but click over here on the check mark. And we need to change this value to 80 so that the maximum value of this knob is 80, which determines the level of attack that we can put on the this envelope. So max 80, min 0. Uh, don't worry about anything else for now. So now we need to do the same for decay. We need to turn that up to 80. And then skip sustain for now and go right to release and change that to 80. The reason I had you do that was all these um, not the attack, decay, and release are a little bit different from sustain because attack is based on time. Um, if you look here uh, at the envelope, this first line going up, this first slope, is the attack. And when you increase the length of the attack, the it takes longer for the envelope to actually take effect. So, um, I'll, sh I'll give you a little example of it here. Now notice how it took a little time for the note to rush in. It was like, woo. It wasn't a straight up attack. Um, this is what would happen if you turn the attack all the way down. Sounds like a regular buzz. 
And so now when we turn the attack, oh, three quarters of the way up. That's how it takes a long time to come into the attack. So we're going to put the attack in the middle right now, right about 40, where it was before. And the decay is also the same thing. Um, well, actually, let, to make this easier, I'll do release. Um, if you have a quick release, when you let go of the note, it takes less time for the note to stoop off, I guess. So I play it, the tack rushes in. I let go, you don't even really hear the release because it's so short, so I'll turn it up. A little more delay. Now notice there how it took longer for the note to die away after I let go of the key. So if I turn the release all the way up, notice how long it takes for the note to finally diminish away. It'll probably do that for quite a while. And so I explain the attack, decay, and release. Or I was saying, uh, explained attack and release. Decay, um, well, let me do sustain first. Sustain, decay is also a measure of time, but sustain is a level. And notice, you won't change the values of this knob at all. The minimum is zero and the maximum is one. And that's because it's a level and not a measure of time. And so this sets an, an actual amount of how much amplitude the envelope is going to let through. So if I turn the sustain all the way down, when I hold the key, the note drops off and becomes much quieter. When I let go, the release still takes a while. I'm going to turn the release back down. Um, so you notice how if I turn the sustain way down, you can barely hear the note as I hold the key. It's it really quiet. I let go. All right, now decay is the length of time it takes for the note to basically peak at its highest level and then come back down to where the sustain point is. And so if I turn decay up significantly, you'll hear how long it takes to go from the peak volume down to the sustain level. Notice how it gradually got quieter. All right, um, so that is the, uh, I guess that's really your most basic synthesizer and is the foundation of most any basic synthesizer you'll come across. So with that, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it somewhat helpful and I will, my next video, I'll continue the construction of our synth so that it has the LFO and the cutoff filter and other stuff. Stay tuned.